Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter from Tyco Run. Okay, so I had just pulled this out of the box. So let's see what else is in there besides this piece of styrofoam on top. We also have, oh, it looks like a wireless remote. That's crazy. Uh, we got some cabling. Uh, and we have a cigarette lighter adapter, and it looks like a, uh, a negative or a, a ground wire. Uh, then we also have, uh, it looks like uh, the caps to screw on, like the bolts to screw on to the terminals. And we have a user manual. Okay, so first impressions with this inverter. Uh, first of all, it's small. Uh, for a thousand watt inverter, I feel like it's pretty small. Uh, in comparison, here is a 500 watt inverter. This can do double the wattage, but it's basically the same size. I mean, it's a little bit taller. It's like a, a half inch to maybe three quarters of an inch taller and maybe an inch wider or an inch longer. But besides that, um, yeah, I feel like it's pretty small. Uh, secondly, I, I see that there's a display on here. And I believe this display will show us uh, the wattage of the AC side. Uh, it will also show us the voltage of the AC side and the voltage of the DC side. And it will also show us any kind of warnings that are occurring with the inverter. On the front side here, we have uh, two AC receptacles. We also have two USB receptacles right here, which are the uh, 5 volt 2.4 amp. And then we have the uh, the type C, the USB-C uh, port right here, which can handle up to 20 watts. Uh, we also have our off-on switch and our grounding, our grounding uh, connection right here. And on this side, we have our fan and our positive and negative connections. The housing is all aluminum, which is nice. It also came with these battery connectors right here, which they look to be, I mean, these look like they are either eight or 10 gauge wire. So that is pretty small, but that's what we're gonna be using for our testing because that's what came with it. Also, it came with a cigarette lighter adapter, which I thought was ridiculous for a thousand watt inverter. There's no way you can use a thousand watts by plugging it into a cigarette lighter. But they thought about that and they have a warning right here that says, if you're gonna use more than 150 watts in the AC source, you need to connect it to a battery and do not use a cigarette lighter adapter. And then also uh, the grounding cable, which would be good for just connecting it to the frame of your car or RV to make sure that it's grounded properly. So we're gonna go ahead and connect this up to a 100 amp hour battery and uh, see what it does when we turn it on. Okay, and connecting these wires to this inverter, I don't really like the, the hand tightening little lugs here. Um, because first of all, I've got this tightened as hard as I can and I can still just move this wire. And that just screams hot spot, uh, loose wire, uh, you know, even though this is just a thousand watt inverter, still you want to have your connections really tight. I noticed that the, uh, with the hardware that came with it to, to connect the wires to the inverter, uh, it did not come with a, um, like a lock washer. And so I would recommend if you have lock washers, put a lock washer on here. Uh, I think that will give you a much tighter connection, uh, even if you're only hand tightening it. Okay, I've got this thing all connected to my 100 amp hour battery and I figured, you know what, I might as well go ahead and use the remote to see if it will uh, turn it on and off. And the remote does not come with a battery and it doesn't come with a typical AAA or AA battery. It comes with an A23 battery, which I just happen to have one right here. Here, this is an A23 battery. Here is your typical AA battery. So you can see, you can see the size difference right there. Now these A23 batteries, you can get them on Amazon for you know three or four bucks for a two pack. So they're not hard to get, but they're kind of, uh, I don't know, they're not something that you just have around the house. And uh, the, the switch is the switch is right in the middle, so let's go ahead and see if it just turns on. All right, it does not. I'll put it on off. 
See if it turns on, and it did. And look at that, we have a display. And right off the bat, I like the display because it is a color display, which I wasn't expecting. It has a, uh, a battery capacity gauge. It has, like I said, your voltage of your battery. It has the voltage of the AC and then the wattage of what is being used by the appliance. See if it turns off. And it does, perfect. In the documentation, it does say that this inverter is a little over 90% efficient and that it uses 1.3 amps of uh, standby consumption. So that would be you know, right around 14 watts, something like that. And I'm actually getting a 1.11 amperage uh, draw. So yeah, you're looking at 13 or 14 watts of standby usage, just having it plugged in and turned on. Next, let's see what the, uh, let's, let's see how close this is right here, this 13.2. And my multimeter reads 13.08 at the inverter. So it's off by uh, 12 one hundredths of a volt. And up here we have, yep, 13.09. So if you saw in one of my last videos, the difference between 13.2 and 13.08 can be very significant when it comes to a lithium iron phosphate battery. All right, and it also says that it's 120 volts AC. Let's go ahead and test that. Yeah, 120 volts. So that is excellent. So it's not a 110 volt uh, inverter, it's 120, which is great. That makes it a little bit more efficient, I believe. Um, we'll see what happens with the voltage when we put a load on there. We're gonna start with a 500 watt load and we're gonna run that for a little bit just to make sure that it works just fine. Uh, while it's doing that, we'll test the voltage and we'll also test the, uh, the DC amperage and voltage to see uh, what kind of efficiency it's getting with a 500 watt load. All right, I got a 500 watt heater here, so let's go ahead and turn it on. And we see that the wattage is going up to 530, 520. It looks like the wattage goes in increments of 10 watts. So uh, if you're looking at like hyper specific uh, wattages, you're not going to get it with this inverter. And it looks like after it's heating up, it does settle down and it's settled at about 450 watts. The fan on the inverter also has turned on and it actually blows a good amount of air for such a small inverter. And it's sucking it in from this side and blowing it out on the fan side. So the fan will actually help keep these cables uh, cooler. But we'll test that once we, once we start using a 1,000 watt load. All right, I went ahead and put a, uh, an AC meter on the plug. And the display on the inverter does show that it's 510 watts coming out of the inverter. But this, uh, this meter actually shows 540 watts. So let's go ahead and take the amperage of the cabling. And we're looking at 49 amps. And the battery voltage is 12.54. So on the DC side, that gives us 614 watts going into the inverter. And if you take 542 and divide it by 614, you get an 88.2% efficiency rate. And that's with a 500 watt load. So uh, my numbers are not showing a 90% efficiency rate. It's showing an 80, a little bit over an 88% at half load. Okay, now we're gonna step up the uh, load a little bit. What I have now is my induction cooktop. I have it set at 900 watts. So this thing is gonna be pushing its thousand watts right here. And we'll go ahead and let it run for a while, maybe until this water starts boiling. All right, let's go ahead and start it. All right, and this meter shows 930 watts. The one on top of the inverter shows between 910 and 920 watts. So relatively close. It still shows 120 volts. And this meter shows actually 121 volts. So that's good. I already noticed that these, uh, the sides of this inverter are getting a little warm. All right, here is a thermal camera view. I'll go ahead and put it on the screen. And you can see that the side of the inverter is already at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And the cabling, 
we're looking at 130 degrees at the positive right here. Let's see the other side. Ooh, 140 degrees on the back side over here. Yeah, and it's, it's warm to the touch. And it's only been about three minutes. At least the, uh, the water is uh, warmer than the inverter, so that's good. Yeah, and that back side, we're, st we're looking at, or we're almost at 150 degrees on the back side of this inverter. All right, let's look at the back side of this inverter again, and we are looking at 150, 154 degrees on the side here. And this side, we're looking at 138 degrees. Cabling, uh, 140, 157 degrees at the connection. And the battery connection is 146 degrees over here. So this, this wire is 136 degrees. It's pretty warm, but these cables are usually rated at around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, my water is starting to boil, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and push this up to 1300 watts and hopefully this thing shuts off. Here we go. Perfect. After about three seconds, this shuts off. After about three seconds, the inverter shut off. Um, it turned off all the power, and then it turned the it turned, but the inverter turned back on after about five seconds. So that's good and bad. I mean, it really should stay off for longer. I feel, but I do like that the fan is continuously running still, and the fan will turn on when it feels like the case is over 103 degrees and that case is definitely over 103 degrees so the fan will probably keep kicking on and off okay i went ahead and took the, the four screws off the top so let's go ahead and pop the cap there we go okay i'll be the first one to tell you that i don't know much about inverters i don't know about the internals of inverters um what i do look for is uh well, I mean, lots of big splotches of glue, um, which I don't see, I don't see any glue, actually, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, that looks like one big capacitor right there with two small ones over here and three small ones over there. I don't really see any internal fusing. Um, I also, I see that the Oh, the FETs are lined up right up against the side of the frame, so that's why it got so hot. Um, I don't see any other heat sinks, which I don't know if that's typical for a 1,000 watt inverter. Uh, this cabling right here, it says uh, four millimeters squared. Okay, and four millimeters squared cable is actually 11 gauge cable. And my chart shows at five meters, it can only handle 12 amps. So you're looking at 24 amps total from this side. But you know, since it's such a tiny cable, I'm guessing you could probably double that again. But that would be, you know, that would give you your 50 amps right there. And that would be, I mean, but 50 amps, 50 amps is only, you know, 600 watts something like that so uh this cabling might be you know you wouldn't you wouldn't want to run a thousand watts continuous like i just did for a long time because it really probably could start affecting these cables right here because this is not made for a thousand a thousand watts and then over here this looks like the this is the display board and then this is right here this is the antenna for the uh for the remote and i'm not sure oh yeah here they are and then over here uh, i can see two 30 amp fuses on this side right here okay we got this thing back together and i just want to show you that there is a nice clean sine wave on this so it is a uh, pure sine wave and let's go ahead and turn on a 500 watt load
and still everything looks nice and clean. Okay, so what do I think of the Tyco Run 12 volt, 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter? Well, you know, for 90 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, it's all aluminum casting. It's a true 120 volt inverter. It has a USB-C port along with a couple of USB-A ports. Uh, it has two AC receptacles and it has a display. And then a little bonus is this 1000 watt inverter has a wireless remote, battery not included. It does exactly what it should also. You know, it ran, it ran 500 watts with absolutely no problem. It didn't get really warm at all either. It also ran 900 watts or a little bit over 900 watts uh, to the point where my induction cooktop boiled some water. It did get pretty hot, but for a thousand watt inverter, you should expect that because there's no, there's no heat sinks on the inside. The heat sink is the case. So you're, you should expect this, this side, especially where the FETs are, you should expect that to get pretty hot. Uh, also the cabling, the cable, the cabling's pretty thin, but that is to be expected with all inverters that you buy. Um, if you're going to be running heavier loads than 500 watts, I would definitely get different cabling. This cabling is fine if you're just going to be running like little 300 watt loads for whatever use you have. Uh, the display, I like the display. Um, it tells pretty good information if you're just looking at it at a glance, but I wouldn't use this if you're looking to see if you can calculate, uh, you know, the capacity that's left in your lithium iron phosphate battery. For instance, if it's connected to a lead acid battery, uh, that would be really no problem. I do like the fact that it shows the voltage of the battery, uh, the voltage going out from the AC side and the wattage, even though in my findings, they were all off by just a little bit. Uh, the insides of the inverter looked pretty good to my amateur eyes. I didn't see a bunch of glue blob and everything all up. It looked pretty clean and tidy. Uh, the wiring on the inside I felt was a little bit small going from the DC connectors to the to the PCB um, But it's such a small cable. I feel like we can get away with it Besides that everything else looked pretty clean Please let me know in the comments if you know more about inverters than I do and you notice something in there that is of concern other than that um, I liked this inverter uh, I'll be using it more uh, and I will definitely let you know if I have any issues with it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, I'll have a link to this inverter in my description if you want to look more into it. Again, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.